In this video, I will try to explain how you interpret the data that you get from an ANOVA. So in a previous video, I illustrated how to use these data over here, which are data based on an experiment using Wisconsin fast plants. Um, so I explained how to use these data to do an ANOVA. And in an ANOVA, you get these summary tables, and you also get an ANOVA. Um, table. And what I want to do in this video is explain how you interpret these p-values. Um, to make sense of this, I want to look at this graph. So I used the summary tables to make this graph. And if you look at this graph, you can see that there are basically three comparisons that you can make. Um, the first thing you can do is you can compare all of the standard plants to all of the dwarf rosette plants, regardless of what treatment they have. And so um, when you look at these non-overlapping error bars um, between this, uh, all these standard plants, these error bars do not overlap with either of the error bars for the dwarf rosettes. So it looks pretty clear that the standard plants are significantly taller than the dwarf rosette plants. The second comparison comparison you can make is between the blue bars and the orange bars. This is a little bit more tricky um, to make this comparison, but it kind of looks like if you add the blue bars together and compare that to the sum of the orange bars, it looks like the orange bars, the total of the orange bars is going to be more than the total of the blue bars. So it kind of looks like there's a significant difference between the control and the experimental. But that one's a little bit hard to tell just from the graph. And then the third um, comparison that you can make is, well, what was the effect of the treatment on the two different kinds of the two different varieties of fast plants? So um, in, order, in other words, what was the interaction of our two variables, our treatment with our uh, variety? So to look at this graphically, we can say, well, the blue, blue bar compared to the orange bar for the standard plants, there's not much difference. It doesn't look like there's a significant difference there. But if we compare the, com the control plants for the dwarf rosette variety with the gibberellin treated plants, there's definitely a difference there. So it seems like the response of the dwarf plants to the treatment was significantly different than the response of the standard plants to the treatment. Okay, so having looked at this in the graph now, I'm going to drag this down so that we can compare it with our um, results that we have in the ANOVA table. So notice in your ANOVA table, you have three different p-values. Um, the first p-value is the sample p-value. The sample corresponds to our rows of data, or remember that the sample, we said that there were four individuals in the sample. So, so the sample really is controlling, comparing your control to your experimental. And really, it's comparing all of these numbers that were your control plants versus all of these numbers that were your experimental plants. Or, said another way, you're comparing the blue bars with the orange bars. So this p-value, um, I'm going to just change this name from sample to treatment. Uh, because this first p-value is telling you the, um, the effect of the treatment uh, is the water versus the gibberellic acid. Does that make a difference? Well, this p-value of 0 0.003 is less than our critical p-value of 0 0.05. So that tells us that um, the blue bars are significantly different as a whole compared to the orange bars. If I added up my blue bars and added up my orange bars, there would be an overall difference um, between those numbers. If we go up here to our summary table, another way of looking at that is that the average of the 
controls, um, this total average of the controls compared to this total average of the experimental, that's the difference we're looking at, this 7 versus 10.25. And that's a significant difference according to this p-value. The second p-value is the columns. The columns refers to the standard versus the dwarf. So we're comparing now all of these numbers to all of these numbers for the dwarf rosettes. Another way of looking at that in the graph is that we're comparing all of these standard plants to all of these dwarf rosette plants. And it's clear as we saw in the graph that these standard plants are significantly higher, taller than these dwarf rosette plants. And that corresponds to this extremely small p-value of 1.94 times 10 to the minus 5. So that's a very significant number. This third p-value is sometimes the hardest to understand. That's the interaction between the treatment and the columns. And the columns in this case are the two varieties. So we could change this columns to say um, variety. Or varieties. Um, so there's a significant difference between the two varieties. Now what about the interaction? Do the standard plants respond the same way as the dwarf rosette plants? And this p-value, again, it's less than 0 0.05. So that this third p-value tells me that there's a significant difference in the response of the standard plants compared to the response of the dwarf rosette plants. The dwarf rosette plants, their gibberellic, the gibberellic acid treated plants are taller than the non gibberellin treated plants. And this is not the same with your standard plants. So this significant p-value um, is kind of what we're really looking for in this experiment. Did uh, how much difference did the gibberellin make in the dwarf rosette plants compared to how much difference it made in the standard plants? So that's how you interpret the three p-values um, from the ANOVA table.